Hey everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Kaylin. I am a master's student at the University of Oxford studying history and in the fall I meant to begin my PhD at Yale in history and African American studies. I make academic lifestyle content which is all about my life as a graduate student but I also make videos that are to educate my followers to help students that are passionate about academia find roots into higher education and into the field of academia as researchers and as scholars. So today's video is going to be all about what's going on with the remainder of my master's degree at Oxford, what's going to happen with Yale. People have been asking me about what I'm going to do about law school. I've gotten a bunch of questions about my move in August and so I am going to answer all of the questions that you guys have and I'm going to discuss all of the nitty gritty about how Oxford has been handling the COVID-19 situation and how Yale has been handling it and how I personally have been handling it and what the next couple months are going to look like. So this video is going to be a little long, I apologize in advance, but there's a lot of information to cram in here. And I'm also going to reveal some fun projects that I'm going to be working on over the next couple months at the end of the video, so stick around if you want to know more about that. So I left on March 9th, which was the day after the first confirmed case of coronavirus in Oxford. So originally I was supposed to be going on a trip with my grandmother to London and Prague, but the weekend of March 7th I called her and said that given the current situation of the spread of the coronavirus in California. I was a little worried that I might be unable to leave Oxford if I did not leave soon, so we ultimately decided that on Monday, March 9th, I would fly home. I thought that this virus outbreak was likely going to last about a month. I thought that I was going to have a chance to return to Oxford, even if it was going to be delayed by a week or two. I had no idea that I was not going to be able to return to Oxford at all. I did not know that that was the last time I was going to see my friends. I did not know that was the last time I was going to be in that room. I did not know that that was likely going to be the last time I see Oxford in a couple years. It's devastating on multiple levels as someone who worked really hard to get to Oxford and was really excited about the prospect of working on my dissertation. I'm gonna try to not get emotional but I invested a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of effort. I took a big risk going to Oxford and so it is a little bit disappointing that I'm not going to be able to finish my degree there in person. That all being said, the time that I had there I cherish greatly. I will talk a little bit more about my Oxford experience and all that went into it because there were some big ups but there were also some really massive downs and I learned a lot while I was there and I met some really incredible people and I found a reinstilled sense of passion for my research and for my subject and because of that experience I am so excited to start a PhD in the future, whatever that looks like. I'll talk about that a little later in this video but my time at Oxford was incredibly valuable. I hope that you guys enjoyed the vlogs that I made while I was there. I am so devastated that I wasn't able to make all the videos that I was planning to and I hope that someday I can go back to do research. I know I most likely will because a lot of my archives are there and I miss my friends so much. I am devastated that I am not going to see them again for a while and I just hope that there is a way that I can either see them in the States or if I can come visit them in the UK someday. Next I'm going to move on to talking about how Oxford has handled the COVID-19 situation and how that has impacted me, the people in my department, and what that looks like for the remainder of my degree. So I am on a nine month master's program which is the MST in US history. The MST is a taught masters but it has a very large dissertation component in trinity term. So although I had some teaching components at the beginning of my experience at Oxford, my final term was going to be done almost entirely isolated working on my dissertation. So when I left Oxford the first official that I heard from in Oxford was the principal of Somerville College whose name is Jan Royal and she was incredibly kind and caring towards the students. I did write her myself to tell her about my personal 
concerns and my own situation and she was incredibly kind and I have to say that through it all the Somerville College community has really come together to take care of one another. I have been involved in the MCR. During this time I've seen Somerville College students coming together with the administration and with the faculty to figure out how to best care for its students and that's something that I greatly appreciate. I loved my time at Somerville College and I strongly recommend that if anyone is planning on applying to Oxford that you consider Somerville because it is a community that really takes care of its own and that is definitely evident considering how my college has handled this pandemic. Recently I have received a message from the bursar's office to discuss accommodation. We are not being charged accommodation for Trinity term for the students who have left and that is a godsend that definitely helps things for me and that definitely helps things for a lot of students. So I am grateful to Somerville for removing that expense on its students and for also offering to figure out ways to return students' belongings that were left behind, including my own. So the next piece that I want to talk about is how the Faculty of History has handled the pandemic and how it has communicated with its students. So the first letter that we received from the Director of Graduate Studies in the Faculty of History unfortunately was not the most helpful. I am going to include a small segment of that letter here in case you guys want to pause this and read it, but ultimately it stated that although the administration understood that its students were under a significant amount of stress, they hoped that students would find a way to write their dissertations. And in addition to that, it stated that although the Bodleian libraries were closed and although our archives were most likely impossible to access, that they hoped we'd find a way to make it work and that we would still be able to produce a 10 to 15,000 word dissertation. Although that is a decrease in the required word amount for the dissertation, it was a bit disheartening and also a bit unrealistic to expect that all students would have the exact same circumstances and would be able to carry on as normal. That being said, the Oxford History Graduate Network, which is basically a community of graduate students made up of master's students and PhD students, met to come up with a formal letter to address their certain grievances and other students on the MST also wrote a letter to the faculty stating that their circumstances and their voices were not being understood or heard. I would agree with that. I think that the Faculty of History was not taking into account how this was going to affect students. I in particular had to return home early and I'm having to do my degree remotely while also maintaining a job. I'll discuss this a little bit later, but also my grandfather had a stroke only a couple days after me returning and we are trying to find ways in order to make money and stay afloat and to take care of him and it's been an incredibly difficult and emotionally challenging process. To think that my dissertation project is basically impossible at this point and I'm going to have to redirect entirely on top of everything else adds a significant amount of stress. So that all being said, I appreciated how the graduate community and the faculty came together to point out to the university and to the faculty how students were handling the situation and how it was unrealistic to expect that all students would be able to carry on as normal. Among the grievances in that letter were a discussion of a lack of resources one thing for myself was a lack of archives and a lack of libraries. I am in a situation where luckily I have quite a large book collection of my own, so I can conduct quite a bit of my own research from home with the archives that are available in the US, but that is a very unlikely circumstance for everyone. In addition to that, there are some students that are either starting new courses or were using the dissertation as a writing sample for future PhD applications, and so to not be able to do their research would be devastating to their later degrees and to their later applications. And then in addition to that, there were students that felt that they did not have a workspace at home that was conducive to them completing the dissertation and others with disabilities and financial hardships and so there were a lot of things that the university and the 
faculty were not taking into consideration but luckily we received a second letter and we have been given a pretty sizable extension they have not discussed how they're going to handle any financial hardship on students we're hoping that in the next couple of weeks that we'll hear about that in addition to that they said that the final paper although some students may be able to produce the dissertation they're planning on others may not and that their paper may end up looking more like a typical term paper or literature review and that was fine and then in addition to that they said that there will be no decrease in grades you can only get the exact same grade that you came in with so although we are unaware of what our grades are at this point technically they cannot be decreased by the grade of the dissertation. So luckily they did initiate some mitigating factors for students, but we'll see over the coming weeks how that plays out. The dissertation now is not due until August with the extension of six weeks, but I'm planning on trying to get it in quite a bit earlier because I need to be able to have some downtime to work on other projects and to prepare for my move to New Haven and to prepare for my PhD work. So I think that's a pretty good segue to move into talking about what's going on with Yale. I warned you guys, this is going to be a long video. <laughs> so I've talked with the African American Studies Department and have also received some information from the overall university about how Yale is handling the COVID-19 situation and what that's going to look like for graduate students particularly. Luckily, they state that stipends will be distributed as normal. So I have signed a contract with Yale and I meant to receive my first stipend check at the end of August. So given the information I have received, I will still be receiving my stipend whether or not classes will continue in person or online. I have signed on an apartment. I just wanted to make this announcement in this video, but I got the call yesterday. I got the apartment that I wanted when I was in New Haven a couple months ago. I did a quick apartment search. I didn't include any footage because I honestly didn't want to jinx it. I really wanted to get this apartment, so I have some really great news. I got it. I sent in the deposit and everything, so I'm going to insert some photos here for you guys to see what the apartment looks like. I'm so excited to move in. It's just a matter of how and when. My lease is meant to start on August 1st, so my plan is to move at the end of July or the beginning of August, but it all depends on what the policies are in California and in Connecticut at the time. I am planning on driving across the United States with all of my things, so an additional factor that needs to be considered is whether or not I will be able to actually do that. Luckily, I think my worst case scenario is that I will be able to move my things. I may just be moving to New Haven to do online classes. But luckily, I got an apartment where I can bring my dog so I won't be entirely alone. And I am going to figure it out and I'm going to take you guys along for this journey because it's going to be a long one and I will keep you guys up to date as to what's going on. I just don't know what's going to happen in a couple months. I think we're all feeling the sense of uncertainty and inability to plan anything and so I am just trying to do what I can to put things in place for the future but we'll figure it out as we go along. So another question that I've been asked a lot about, which I am not honestly quite sure how to answer, is what's going on with law school. So if you guys don't know, if you guys haven't watched my videos or you haven't heard this before, I don't only plan on doing a PhD, I also plan on doing a law degree as well. And so I am currently in the process of beginning to study for the LSAT again. I studied for it last year, but ultimately did not get the score that I wanted because I just didn't have the time to dedicate to my LSAT preparation and just wasn't focused enough on it if I'm honest and so now I am kicking it into high gear to prepare for the LSAT but one thing that does concern me is whether or not the LSAT will actually run in the fall. So I was meant to take the August exam and I was going to begin preparations now for that but due to one finances and two the coronavirus I am unsure when I should begin studying. I am pretty much going to begin studying now but I need to figure out how to pay for the course. If you don't know LSAT courses are incredibly expensive and the one that I am planning on taking is going to be a pretty penny. So I'm trying to find ways to pay for that and get started but I'm doing some self-study 
on my own in the meantime. I'm going to plan to take the October exam instead of the August exam in order to give myself a bit more time to prepare and we'll just take it from there. I'm not entirely sure what's going to happen in August. I don't know whether that exam is actually going to run. I know LSAC canceled the March exam and is most likely going to be canceling the April and it looks like they may have to cancel the June. So I'm not entirely sure what my LSAT plan is going to look like, but I'm just gonna take it one step at a time like I am with everything. And I still plan on applying to law school in the fall. I still plan on going down that path. So I'm just hoping it works out and I'm gonna do everything that I can in order to set myself up for success because that's all that I can do. <laughs> so now I'm gonna discuss what I'm going to be doing in the meantime. So what does my dissertation look like? What am I gonna be doing for work? Am I going to be studying for the LSAT, which I kind of covered already, and how I want to build my business and also begin some new projects. So first I'll talk a little bit about what I've been doing for work. If you guys have been watching my recent vlogs, you may have seen that I began riding horses professionally again. That was something that I did before I went to UCLA for my bachelor's and it's something that I have continued to do freelance over the years. So I came back to California and got a text from my friend Sammy, who I've known for I think six years now. And she asked if I knew of anyone in the area that was looking for work. And and I said that it just so happens that I was back and I was looking to begin riding again and to make some money. So I have been working there, but due to the financial hardships that the coronavirus is causing, I don't know how much I'm gonna be getting paid. I know that I am going to be getting paid something, but I don't begrudge my boss or anyone for their lack of resources at this time because we are heading into what looks like a very large recession. And so I'm doing what I can and they are doing what they can. So I've agreed to work Tuesday through Friday. So that way I can have the weekends to work on other projects and I'm just going to figure it out from there. Any money that I do make is going to be put towards preparing for the LSAT, preparing for my move, for daily living expenses, for hopefully helping my grandmother with some expenses. So it's just some extra money on top of the money that I should be receiving it from my funding package at Oxford. The money I receive from Oxford is a loan, so I'd prefer not to use too much of that. When I do get it, I plan to put it in a savings account and basically save it for when I need to move and for additional expenses that may arise. So now in addition to that I want to talk a little bit about the dissertation because that's the part that has been the most stressful perhaps other than some of the family things that I discussed earlier. But with the dissertation the project I was planning to do which was looking at the legal precedents and legacies of Particeco de Ventrum which was a law about slave motherhood and matrilineal descent, basically stating that all children born of enslaved women would then be slaves. That project is basically one that I can't pursue anymore because I needed to get into the National Archives in Kew in the UK and the Weston Library at Oxford. So basically the sources that I would need in order to produce a dissertation on that subject are unavailable. So I am going to redirect my project. I'm still waiting to hear from my supervisor to see what she thinks. As I said earlier, I wanna get my dissertation done early. I do not plan on using the extension time because I honestly just need to get it done and I need to get my transcripts to Yale so that I can begin that journey. <laughs> and I also want to get it off of my plate. With everything else going on, the dissertation at Oxford is one thing that I have control over and I have the ability to complete. So I'm going to try to find ways to do that. And I am gonna try to not slap on that and I am just gonna try to get it done. That being said, I'm going to make a video very soon about starting a dissertation from scratch because I basically am. I will keep you guys up to date on what is going on with the dissertation. You'll see plenty of videos about me working on it, working through it, and completing it. So stick around for those if that's something you're interested in. And then as for studying for the LSAT, I am going to begin a course as soon as I can afford it. And in the meantime, I'm going to be doing self-study and I will plan on taking the October exam. And since I'm back home and have the time to kind of get organized and focus on a couple other projects, I want to work on building my consultation services. If you guys did not know, I do college admissions 
consulting for undergraduates, transfer students, and master's students. I've worked with students from all over the world to get into US and UK universities, including students from Australia, Sri Lanka, India, Italy, Canada, the United States, and the UK. I offer services to help polish personal statements, to help prepare students for interviews, and all of that. So that is something that I want to work on. I'm working on kind of revamping my website right now in order to make it more pleasing to the eye and also more informative for my future clients. And in addition to that, I want to also build up my YouTube channel. I'm going to be uploading every Tuesday and Friday from now on. We are only a little over 200 subscribers away from 1000 and I would really love to hit that mark within the next couple months if possible. So I really appreciate you guys hitting that subscribe button and for supporting my channel and for supporting my videos and I love being able to put out content that you guys enjoy. So if you guys ever have any suggestions, please reach out to me. And if you guys ever just want a friend to talk to or you have aspirations that you would like to discuss with someone, then please feel free to reach out to me on Instagram or by email. I would love to meet you guys. I also want to plan some Zoom meetings with my subscribers. So if you guys do not yet follow me on Instagram, I'm going to be putting up requests to set up Zoom meetings with my followers on there a couple hours in advance. So if you guys are at all interested, please go ahead and follow me on Instagram because that is where you will find all the information day to day on how to reach me. And last and finally, I know I've been teasing with this, but I am working on a new project and that is to begin a podcast. So it's something I've been thinking about for a long time now and I finally figured out a name for it. I am working on the concept and episodes. I don't know exactly when it'll go live. I'm still working on how I'm going to be able to conduct interviews and things while being remote, but once I figure that out, I will tell you guys all of the news, but I wanted to begin getting you guys excited for it because it's something that I'm gonna be working on throughout my next couple videos. So I wanted to give you guys a little teaser as to what is to come, and I hope you guys are as excited about it as I am. It is a podcast which will focus on connecting the past to the present and will have a historical element of historical research, but also connecting that to live stories of people that have risen above adversity and have found pathways to higher academia, to industries that were otherwise not available to women, people of color, people of low-income backgrounds, first-generation students, etc. And so I want to conduct a variety of interviews with people that are inspiring to me and are inspiring to you guys. So if you guys have any suggestions for people that you guys would like to see on the podcast, please send them my way. So we've now come to the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. And I know that it was long, but I wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update. And although I can put it in tidbits in my vlogs, I wanted to make a full and complete update video for you guys so that you are aware of what's going on and what is going to be happening over the next couple months. All right, guys, we've now come to the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you guys are not yet subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. As you saw in this video, there's going to be a lot of content coming your way and a lot of stuff that is going to be changing over the next couple months. And so I hope you guys are safe and happy and that your families are well and that you are braving this storm. If you guys need someone to talk to you, or if you guys are experiencing hardships, please re feel free to reach out to me and to discuss what's been going on. I am always here for you guys and we are all in this together. We're going to figure out one day at a time and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye everyone. He started with hello on a summer afternoon. I lost myself and everybody else when I found you.